So we're going to look to the <coughs> face, the jaw, and the tongue, and the eyes, the skin of the face. So shifting our awareness to those places. Let those organs of perception become quiet. The ears and the eyes as if they descend into the skull. The jaw, the tongue, the upper, lower and lower palate of the mouth soft. The skin over the face they cut, so the skin becomes soft, quiet, not gripping. It's as if we pull ourselves kind of away deeper into the skull, away from that of outer sensory organs and they become quiet and passive and we exist somewhere if you like deeper inside inside the skull release from front to back so from the kind of face side, feels as if the brain slightly sh almost shrinks inside the skull. Moves back away from the face, away from the sides of the skull, away from the crown of the head. It's almost as if we become smaller within ourselves. Breathing shrinks down to a, a smaller point inside. The outer part of the, the body becomes passive, quiet. So in, in the kind of context of yoga, we call that action pratyahara, the withdrawing of the senses. And it's as if we go from that being very in the outer world and we kind of switch and we moved into that inner world that is where pranayama is pranayama works in that kind of quieter inner part. Bring your awareness to the breath. Just find the breath. Just watch its normal rhythm. And then we give the mind something to connect to. The breath, the movement of the breath, the rhythm of the breath, the touch of the breath. Start to shift your self to the exhalation part of the breath. 
So you begin to kind of empty the lungs, empty the, the mind, empty the skull. Feel as if your exhalation runs from the crown of the head out through the soles of the feet. Gradually make the exhalation a little deeper, more complete. And as you get towards the end of that exhalation, let it kind of it kind of finishes and then just pause a moment then just see if there's a little further you can exhale don't force it but often we go to a point where it almost stops and then if you just pause then there's just a little further you can kind of empty out like a, a bit like another another level down you can keep exhaling And don't quickly inhale. So if you can sit in the end part of that exhalation. So when you've done that full exhalation, a little pause, if there's a little more to exhale, and then there's that real stillness for a moment before your inhalation begins. I often just talk about those pauses and how important those pauses are when we come to pranayama. The pauses are also important because of the, the natural stillness that exists when the breath is still. And in this kind of really extremely uncertain times that we are in at the moment, one of the, if you like, the effects of that is the mind becomes very busy because of the concerns, the unknown, all those things that are there. The mind becomes very active. Pranayama gives us the chance to essentially slow down the mind. It's important for our, if you like, our energy that we can slow down the mind. If we leave the mind always on that really fast kind of gear, over time it kind of wears us down, wears our nervous system down, it wears our energy down, it wears our resilience down. So even though pranayama is very focused and love attention, Really think about that rest, the rest when the mind is still, even if it's only very brief, it's a very deep rest, a very rejuvenating rest. When it can be still, and we have to, in a way, work to make it still. We have to focus our attention, our, the sharpness to that quietness. If we're very, if it's loose, the mind will just move a lot by following the breath, working with the breath, by observing the mind, we can start to, what I often talk about is culture that mind down. Just a few more cycles of that complete exhalation, see if there's a little more to breathe out. And then just sit yourself for a moment or two in that stillness before you begin to inhale almost like just a little spot momentary where you can really taste or experience a deep rest.
Mr. Iyengar really a lot talks about uses the word freedom when he talks about pranayama, he talks about the process of yoga. And he's talking about a freedom from essentially like those what we call afflictions of the mind, those things that come constantly come in. disturb the self. If we can make the mind still, empty, quiet, we also almost create a space between those things. They come in, they move out more quickly. Now you're going to let the exhalation go. Return to a normal breath. And we're going to work to very, very gradually today deepen the inhalation as if you're going to add 5%, 10% increase each cycle of inhalations. Now most people fairly have experience now with pranayama, so you kind of choose a little bit how many you may do in a row. But gradually now, 5% deeper, 5% the next inhalation deeper. Just that very gentle increasing length, depth of the breath. And even though you may be able to go further, quicker, see if you can resist that and move slowly to become deeper with the breath. Explore the inner passage, the inner inner body with the breath. And after a few cycles, just <clears throat> let your breath return to normal. Take a one or two normal breaths, not deep breaths. Let your face become quiet again, your head become quiet. And then as you're ready again to resume three, four, two or three, whatever your capacity is, back to those deeper, wider inhalations. Let it be very soft, gentle as the breath moves into those new areas. Be with the breath, where the breath touches, let your mind be there. Where the breath avoids, let your mind be there. Where the breath comes smoothly, observe. When the breath starts to change its quality, observe. Remember, after a few breaths, a few cycles, drop back to a normal breath. A few cycles of normal breath. And then one more round of deepening the inhalation.
after your <coughs> next, when you finish the last deeper inhalation, just let your breath come for a few cycles back to that normal quiet breath. Now we've been the last few weeks going towards the loma. Taking the breath in stages, just essentially adding a, a pause. So we're going to do it very simply today. But we're going to connect both the inhalation and the exhalation. So what we'll be doing is inhaling at a mark, so we're just halfway in your pause. You would continue to inhale and then you pause again. So then you've got a kind of essentially like a full breath. You exhale down to halfway, you will pause, and then you do that second half of the exhalation all the way out, and then we take a normal breath or two. So as you're ready, exhale. Inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale, pause, exhale. Take a normal cycle or two of breath. Prepare. As you're ready, exhale, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale, pause, exhale all the way out. Now, don't necessarily have to keep exactly my time. If it's too long, that's fine. Don't, don't go as far as that. Now, we're not doing lots of these cycles. We're having a normal breath in between each one. Try and hold your focus, your attention for that length of that inhalation and exhalation now. Now, pranayama is challenging. It does require a high level of, if you like, concentration and focus. So we'll be continuing a couple more cycles that way. We'll be stopping to take a normal breath between, so you can, if you like, refresh a little bit there, that you can allow yourself to kind of regroup in that time. So as you're ready, exhale. Inhale. Pause. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Pause. Exhale. Normal breath. Exhale. Inhale. Pause. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Pause, exhale, normal breath. Exhale, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale. Pause, exhale, normal breath. Exhale, 
exhale, inhale, pause, inhale, pause, exhale, pause, exhale. One more cycle. Exhale. Inhale. Pause. Inhale. Pause. Exhale. Pause. Exhale. No more breaths. Quiet in the eyes. Quiet in the ears and neck. Let go any tension, hardness on the face. Observe the quality of the breath that's there now. Observe the quality of the mind. Yoga becomes this integration of the body, the mind, the breath. So you see how when we work with pranayama, we start to bring all those elements together. Just quietly bend your knees up. Now I know we do lie for quite a bit of time in the beginning. It will sometimes be challenging on the back. You can put, like I say, a bolster or something under the knees if you know really that length of time is challenging. Roll onto your right side, support your head with your arm, with your hand. <clears throat> now we've each week just doing a little bit of sitting and we'll just continue again a little bit of that today so you're going to come up and take some support for your buttocks you're sitting simple cross leg you need to judge by kind of where your legs come to where your knees come to whether you need more height less height Adjust yourself so you're sitting evenly. Don't let the knees be up in the air. That means the spine will have trouble 
becoming tall if you let the legs come up the spine will, will tend to drop. Now we're just going to go a little bit back today to putting the hands firstly behind, that's right, hands behind and use that to roll the shoulders back. Now if you're sitting on a bit of height you may need to put something there for the hands. You'll kind of warm up quickly so maybe don't put the, the blanket over your shoulders, it tends to kind of push you down, put it around your, your front, wrapping it almost around from the front. Let your spine become tall. Let your head sit straight over the head over the neck, neck over the spine. Release your hands without dropping your back. Take your hands to your front, just over the fingers, over the knees. Now we talked about observing the self. We observe the self in line. And when we come to sitting, we're doing the same thing, but it's more challenging. Can you, can you keep the spine lifted? The back ribs, shoulder blades need to come forward into the body. Let the eyes close. And one of the things I've really been asking everyone to do a little bit at this stage is to just, we're not there for a long time, try not to move around. We t I talked about disturbances when you were lying. When we come to sitting, there'll be essentially disturbances of the body, tightness, hardness. More easily, they kind of pull the mind away from that focused, quiet state. Like in lying, Withdraw yourself inward without losing the, the lift of the spine, the opening of the chest. Draw yourself in a way inside. And from a yoga point of view, we often talk about the things called koshas, they're layers of the being essentially. We have these outer layers and then gradually more and more inner layers. And the journey of yoga, if you like, is, is to pe penetrate those inner layers of the self. And one, and the kind of outer layers, we can notice the mind's very busy, jumping around, moving about, thought from one thought to the next. But if we can move ourselves kind of further inward, it's almost that we kind of start to be, we, we are aware of that layer existing, but we're sitting somewhere deeper inside and we become an observer of those activities of the mind, but not caught up in them. I often talk about, for me, an idea of if you kind of walk into a cave the further you go, it becomes darker, quieter. The outer world kind of disappears more. So that kind of quietness, the stillness, the, the rest we, you know, if you like, desire is within us. It's deep within the self. Observe the breath. In the same way you observe the breath, gradually learn to observe the mind. And that means often you 
you just watch, become aware of the thoughts, how busy they are, how quickly they come in. But when you become an observer, you don't attach yourself to those things as much. You kind of allow them to kind of move out again just as quickly as they came in and you come back to that quiet stillness between the thoughts. mind is still very active. Stay just with the breath. Be aware of the distractions that will come up within the body. While we, we can observe them, acknowledge them, we don't always need to react. And each time we create a, a, a pattern of observing one of these disturbances but not reacting, we begin to kind of change those patterns as samskaras. And we, we come to that idea, as I often talk about that freedom. Just release your legs gently out. Now we'll set up for Shavasana. Put something under the back of your knees that will just help to release the back a little bit from the long line and the sitting. Let your breath become quieter, softer. Let it become that barely there Shavasana breath.
Let the mind become empty, still, at rest. As the mind becomes active, starts to think, just again let go. So the more times essentially we practice that, the easier it becomes. Make the time of the quietness, of the stillness extend. And the, the time that we're thinking, or the mind is busy, decrease. It begins with recognizing when the mind is active. becomes clearer when we we can experience or recognize when the mind is also still. So we understand what that is, we experience what that is. It may just be very momentarily, but not intellectually understanding it, but understanding it from our experience. Be clear when we drift from one to the other, when we drift out of that stillness to mind thinking, becoming active. Also experience it the other way when we do stop, the thoughts stop for a moment and we go into that quietness. Quietly now bend your knees up. Let your eyes slowly open. 
bring your hands up to rest on your abdomen. Roll over to your right side, support your head as you roll over. Just pause there. And as you're ready, you just push off that left hand. Come on. I'll keep everyone kind of muted 